Welcome once again to the revision clause for UGC Net English provided by Professor Academy channel. In today's class, we are going to look at the form and evolution of the novel. And let's start with picaresque novel. When we say picaresque novel, it means rogue. So the novel is about a person who doesn't listen to his parents and he goes on voyages or he goes on adventures and he encounters a lot of problems and finally learn, uh, learns about life. So this is Picaresque novel. Example, we have the Spanish novelist, Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote or Don Quixote, Q-U-I-X-O-T-E. And this novel is considered the first modern novel in the world. And it was published in two parts in 1605 and 1615. We have a famous character whose name is not actually Don Quixote. He, he is just an old man, an old man who is very much uh, obsessed with the reading novels, romance novels, adventure novels. So what he does, he wants to go on an adventure. So he takes a horse and uh, he also invites his neighbor, Sancho Panza. And Sancho Panza doesn't have a horse, so he travels on a donkey. And even the donkey has a name, Dapple, D-A-P-P-L-E. And this pair, you have a tall man, a lanky man on a horse, and you have a stout man on a donkey. And this very pair creates humor. And they go on adventures, and Don Wizard promises Sancho Panza that if he wins wars and if he wins a lot of battles, whatever he gains and he's going to give that treasure to Sancho Panzo. But that innocent person doesn't know there are not a, not a lot of adventures in the world. Okay, and one of the famous adventures when we talk about Don Quixote is a windmill adventure. What happens, Don Quixote looks at a series of windmills, just windmills, but for him, since his mind creates his own illusions. For him, it looks like um, giants. You know, the windmills look like giants. But for Sancho Ponzo, who is very much rooted in reality, these are just giants. So he asks, what giants, said Sancho Panza? Those you see over there, replied his master, with the long arms, sometimes they are almost two leagues long. And this is the contrast between uh, Sancho Panza and Don Quixote, one who is very much in reality, one who is in very much in fantasy. And this combination is one of the memorable combinations uh, in literature. And you see the cover page of this novel and you have this diagram, which is based on Picasso's uh, sketch of Don Quixote. So please check out Picasso's sketch of Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. And with this, uh, let's go to the list of works, which are also called Picaresque novel. In England, we have Thomas Nash, one of the university wits, and his work, Unfortunate Traveler, which is considered a pioneer when it comes to uh, England, a pioneer of the novel. But it was actually Daniel Defoe and his work, Robinson Crusoe, which is the starting point of the novel. Uh, in England. Robinson Crusoe is a classic example of Picard's novel. So we have Robinson Crusoe who goes against his parents' words and goes on adventures and landed on an island. And he lives there for 28 years. And of course, he meets a person called um, Man Friday. Right? And this is a classic one published in 1719. There's also a part two. Then we have Henry Fielding uh, Tom Jones, uh, a question, what is the subtitle of Tom Jones? And Tom Jones is a Picaresque novel where we have a orphan who is uh, looked after by a wealthy person. And what is the name of that wealthy person? Square Al Worthy, which could be a possible question in net exam. So that's how uh, questions are asked these days. Uh, famous characters, famous words, uh, opening lines of novels or endings. So you should be aware of the openings, endings, and famous characters and famous words. Then we have the American novelist Mark Twain. 
and here is a question for you what is the real name of mark twain because mark twain is a pen name assumed name so what is the real name of mark twain and one of his classics we have huckleberry finn huckleberry finn is all about a little boy who goes on an adventure on the mississippi river and for the first time it not just about huckleberry finn it's also about jim a black who escaped from slavery this is the adventure of huckleberry finn and jim on the mississippi river and we know the impact of quizard is still felt in the modern age even now so example we have salman rushdie's novel quixote q u i c h o t t e written recently uh, it was long listed for the booker prize 2019 and about don quizard a famous russian writer said it is the saddest book ever written it was said by dostoevsky why he said that because at the end of the novel at the end of don quizard don quizard dies because uh, his illusions are gone or in the sense his imagination is gone he can no longer imagine there is no other world for don quizard so once his uh, dreams are done then he has to die so that's why tostovsky calls this novel the saddest book ever written okay let's go for epistolary novel the word epistolary comes from epistle e p i s t l e epistle epistle means letters a novel written in the form of letters a series of letters uh, let's uh, look at the novel alice walker's the color purple a classic when it comes to afro american uh, novels so uh, it was published in 1982 you have this character celia a black girl who was raped by his own father so that's how it was portrayed in the beginning she gives birth to two children the children were taken away from her and she goes through a lot of uh, troubles in her life marriage and other things and finally she finds peace and finally she works uh, hard and the rewards uh, she enjoys the rewards of her works and this is the opening of this novel dear god so the novel is written in the form of letters we have this character who writes letters to god and through these letters we get to know this character and what's happening to her dear god i am 14 years old i am i have always been a good girl maybe you can give me a sign letting me know what's happening to me so she is clueless what's happening to her she is being raped by her own uh, father but of course later uh, she comes to know that it's not her biological father okay uh, please read works like this classics like this because we get questions from classics and other famous epistolary novels we have samuel richardson pamela so pamela is a classic uh, epistolary novel in england and here pamela is uh, abducted by her own master mr b that's the name of the master and he is a kind of a rogue and he wants to uh, exploit this girl but through her virtues uh, she refines him she turns him uh, a good man and they get married at the end of the novel pamela so what is the subtitle of pamela so let me know the answer then we have a uh, gutter g o e t h e very famous uh, novelist his work the sorrows of eng werther then you have a classic gothic novel frankenstein by mary shelley what is the subtitle of mary she- i mean frankenstein we have modern prometheus and in yesterday's clause on drama we looked at prometheus prometheus bound the play written by the greek writer eschylus then prometheus unbound by mary shelley's husband phoebe shelley then we have frankenstein a modern prometheus this is how we connect dots just one dot prometheus and uh, frankenstein is also an epistolary novel why uh, because um, it's in the form of letters written by a ship captain to his sisters and the ship captain encounters a monster and also a person called victor frankenstein a scientist who created that monster and the ship captain is going towards north pole 
and there he encounters Victor Frankenstein and Victor Frankenstein tells his story and this story is a narrated to the ship's uh, captain's sister. So that is the form of Mary, uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the novel. Then we have the master, Tostovsky, and his novel, Poor Folk, which is also an epistolary novel. And we, are, we should ask ourselves uh, a question. Is the form dead? No. Whenever there is a form, it is always revived in the novel. That is, uh, nothing is dead when it comes to the genre of the novel. For instance, this no form, the epistolary form, a variety, is revived by the Indian writer Arvind Adiga in his Booker-winning novel, The White Tiger. The White Tiger is about Balram Halwai, a lower caste person, how he comes up in life. Of course, he is an unreliable character, yet with his talent, of course, his talent is suppressed in this jungle. Yet he comes up in life, becomes an entrepreneur. What is the form? Form is unique in the sense we have Balram Halwai, uh, who is uh, now in Bangalore, running a taxi, a taxi company, right? And he has uh, become a successful entrepreneur. And we have a Chinese pre uh, prime, uh, prime minister coming to India. So as an entrepreneur, he writes emails to that prime minister, Wen Jiambo. So it's in the form of emails. So email is an evolution, the you know, evolution of um, uh, letters, right? So this novel is an evolution of this um, genre called epistolary novel. And let's discuss Alice Walker's womanism, the concept she introduced. Womanism, she said, is like a black feminism. A womanist is a black feminist because she's not satisfied, she's not happy with the term feminism. When we say feminism, she, Alice Walker said, it's more about white feminists, white women and their problems. What about women of color? Women of color in the sense we have black, we have brown and other colors, women across the world. And she coined the term called womanism. It's all about women of color and their rights. Now let's go for Gothic novel. When we say Gothic, the term comes from architecture. Architecture where uh, it's a kind of an old building with, um, it's a causal, generally a causal. We have trap doors, we have skeletons in the cupboards. Uh, there are a lot of secrets within that uh, causal. Even now, when we think of uh, horror genre, we think of a causal. Take any movie for that matter in, the, uh, in recent times where the setting is, you know, the works are set in, uh, in a causal or a kind of a dilapidated building in ancient times, okay? So a Gothic novel, uh, it started with Horace Walpole and others. His famous work, Horace Walpole's The Causal of Otrando, published in 1764. What's the story? So Otrando is ruled by a prince called Manfred, an old man, uh, his wife, Hippolyta, and his son, Conrad, and his daughter, Matilda, four major characters. And what is the story? Uh, Manfred wants his son married, Con Conrad, to a girl called Isabella. But on the day of the wedding, something strange happens. So because there is a curse on this family, the council of Atrando, and because of that ancient curse, something strange happens. A huge helmet falls from the sky and it falls upon uh, Manfred's son, Conrad, and Conrad dies on his wedding day. Now Isabella can't get married to Conrad. So Manfred thinks that he should marry <coughs> Isabella. So he, he chases after Isabella, but is, Isabella is uh, helped by a simple peasant named Theodore. And that's how the story goes. And comes Isabella's father, Frederick. Now there is a clash between fathers, Frederick and Manfred. And now, strangely, they strike up a deal. What's the deal? Manfred says, Frederick, you can uh, marry my daughter, Matilda, 
in the same way you should allow me to marry your daughter isabella so that is the deal between the fathers but the deal is uh, deal goes wrong because matilda manfred's uh, daughter she is in actually love with the peasant theodore so matilda uh, meets with uh, theodore secretly and they are followed by manfred manfred without knowing that matilda is a uh, i mean that person his uh, his daughter he kills matilda and after that of course he feels sorry and there is also a revelation that theodore is the real heir to the castle of atrando and so theodore becomes the prince and theodore is in uh, theodore is in mourning because he mourns for the death of his lady love matilda after a period of time Frederick comes to Theodore, and Theodore uh, finally is ready to move on. And he, that is an implication that he is going to marry Isabella. A kind of a happy ending. So the real prince and uh, getting married to Isabella. So that's how the novel ends. So you can get questions like, um, you know, in which Gothic novel, a huge helmet falls from the sky and kills a person? Questions like that. So what you have to do. you have to read the famous gothic novels at least their stories so you have uh, tobias smollett ferdinand count fathom of course it was published before the castle of atrando but it castle of atrando by horace walpole is considered the first gothic novel then we have famous novels like william beckford's bathok it was published in 1782 but let me know in which language it was originally published then it was translated into english in 1786 then we have ran uh, ann radcliffe the mysteries of udalpho 1794 then mg lewis the monk and this genre gothic novel uh, is a parody by jane aston in her work northanger abbey northanger abbey is more like uh, Cervantes a Don Quixote because in Cervantes Don Quixote Don Quixote is very much obsessed with the romance novels here we have the protagonist Catherine Morland in Northanger Abbey she is very much obsessed with the reading gothic novels especially Anne Radcliffe's The Mysteries of Udalpho this girl assumes every castle will have mysteries trap doors and other things so she wants to Uh, realize what is portrayed in gothic novels but unfortunately uh, that's not the reality so this is actually mock gothic novel not the angel abbey so even this could be a question and whenever you read novels you should concentrate on jane aston's novels we get, we can get questions from jane aston's novel you should be aware of pride and prejudice or sense and sensibility or not the angel abbey okay so with this let's go to bildungs roman so bildungs roman so remember the word build bildungs roman roman means novel it's a novel of formation novel of education so the novel traces the growth and development of a character from childhood to adulthood so that's how the novel is written classic example we have charles dickens great expectations it's about actually two characters we have pip philip pip often called pip and there's also a girl called stella right so this philip pip in the opening scene meets with a prisoner and escaped a convict and that encounter changes his entire life a poor little boy but he gets a chance to study in london become a gentleman and he wants to marry stella stella is actually an adopted daughter of miss havisham an old lady uh, who lives alone because on her wedding day years ago she was uh, jilted by her uh, lover so she she doesn't come out of the uh, house where she lives and she wants to take revenge on men in general so she brings up stella in a strange way so stella is arrogant shella um, you know she looks down upon men in general and here is a boy little boy who is very much in love with stella so for stella he wants to be a gentleman he goes to london he learns um, 
art uh, anyway uh, and at the end of the novel we come to know who's who was you know, who sponsored his education abel macwich the convict he met in the opening scene uh, in his childhood so that is the suspense we um, we encounter towards the end of this novel so you have a question so what is the name of the house in which miss havisham lived so let me know the answer in the comments section and this is the end there are you know in the original ending pip and stella they do not um, uh, come again in life but in the revised ending by charles uh, dickens for great expectations kind of a happy ending stella and pip uh, symbolically told that they are going to live together hereafter okay so this uh, ending published i mean uh, the novel was published in 1866 in a serial form so now they are sitting in front of the ruined place the ruined place refers to the house of miss havisham okay so we are friends said i i refers to pip here rising and bending over her as she rose from the bench and will continue friends apart said stella i took her hand in mine and we went out of the ruined place so implied it is implied that they are going to start a new life of their own after a lot of tragedies and bildung's roman is also called ersi hung's roman spelling e r z i e h u n g s r o m o n ersi hung's roman that's how it is pronounced so bildung's roman it's also called ersi hung's roman there is also another, uh, okay let's look at the examples of bildung's roman we have george eliot the mill on the floss we have two characters uh, tom uh, tom tulliver and maggie tulliver then we have somerset mom of human bondage then thomas man the magic mountain then doris lessing children of violence it's not a novel but a series of novels let me know how many novels are there in this novel sequence children of violence so under bildung's roman there is a variety called kunstler roman k k u n s t l e r r o m a n kunstler roman which means artist novel of course it's a kind of a bildung's roman it traces the development uh, of a protagonist girl or boy from the childhood to adulthood only difference in this novel is that that person is a, becomes an artist so we have this famous example james joyce a portrait of the artist as a young man it's about stephen dedalus so he's caught between two things that he wants to be a priest on the one hand and he wants to be an artist on the other hand will he become an artist so that's a question and uh, james joy is also known for introducing a term called epiphany a kind of uh, a moment of self realization so that is a, a moment of self realization by encountered or experienced by stephen dedalus in this novel find out that situation and if you wants to know sorry if you want to know more about the term epiphany there is a separate video on the term epiphany with examples uh in professor academy's main channel uh not in the main channel but you have a new channel professor academy english so exclusively for the students of english literature go to that channel professor academy english and check out that uh, video on epiphany okay let's go to the next one historical novel when we say historical novel a novel against a background a historical backdrop or a background is said sometimes we also uh, have historical characters coming into the novel but of course it's a fictional but it is set in a historical period the characters are mixed some of the characters are from history some of the characters are fictional by the author when we say historical no novel a master we have walter scott walter scott's ivanhoe it's a classic of historical novels among historical novels published in 1819 it's all about ivanhoe a warrior under who served under richard the lion hearted so we have this uh, term called cour de lion c o e u r de lion french 
term which means the lion hearted richard the lion hearted king so ivan ho fought under uh, richard in the during the crusades so he came back home he wanted to marry rowena r o w e n a lady rowena but his father was against this marriage so the novel is uh, <clears throat> is an adventure novel also because it's about how ivan ho goes about you know defeating warriors and getting married to rowena that's the end so this is the end we have on the screen he lived long and happily with rowena ivan ho distinguished himself in the service of richard he might have risen still higher but for the premature death of the heroic cordelio okay so this is the ending so what you have to do just go through uh the detailed summary of uh, this novel next so we have historical novels famous we have when it comes to indian novels we have kushwan singh's train to pakistan about india pakistan partition next we have thomas kennelly's schindler's ark australian novelist who wrote about um holocaust especially holocaust in poland where the nazis uh, killed jews but there was a person called oscar schindler how he employed these jews and how he saved hundreds of thousands of uh, jews from nazis so that's a story there is also a film called schindler's list by steven spielberg you can watch that movie too then we have uh, indian writer amitav ghosh and his uh, eb trilogy ib is eb trilogy it's set in the opium war opium war between china and the british british who also uh, at the time was also ruling india so they cultivated opium in india and they tried to sell that in china and the novel is set not one novel three novels trilogy the first novel we have sea of poppies second novel in the trilogy eb trilogy we have river of smoke what is the name of the third novel in the trilogy let me know sea of poppies we have river of smoke what is the third novel and we have this english writer hilary mantle who won booker prize twice check out her and her novels are based on english history we have wolf hall 2009 then we have another novel bring up the bodies and another novel because uh, she wrote a trilogy so what is the third novel in hilary mantle's trilogy we have wolf hall bring up the bodies what is the name of the third novel let me know and dickens wrote actually two historical novels charles dickens one very famous a tale of two cities a tale of two cities based on the french revolution set in two cities london and paris and we know the famous opening lines of a tale of two cities right it it was the best of times it was the worst of times it goes on and on similarly the last lines of that novel is also equally famous we have this famous character sydney cotton who sacrifices his life for his lady love and the last lines are uttered by sydney cotton he says it is a far far better thing that i do than i have ever done it is a far far better rest that i go to than i have ever known because he is going to be guillotined in that last scene so read about this character and the situation and then second historical novel uh, written by charles dickens we have barnaby rudge and let me know what this novel is about because it's a historical novel it's about famous uh, it's about the riots the riots in england at that time what is the name of that riot or riots across england okay with this let's go to birds novel so generally a novel is written in prose but there are novels which are written in birds poetry in the form of poems so that is called birds novel a novel a lengthy one but the entire novel is written in the form of poems so famous example we have the victorian poet robert browning known for his uh, dramatic monologues he has written a narrative poem a lengthy one words novel 
the ring and the book a kind of a historical novel because it's based on a trial a court trial in italy the beauty of this novel is that it has 12 books each book is from a different perspective it's about that court case a murder case but each book is from a different point of view because robert browning as we know is known for dramatic monologue so each book is a kind of a dramatic monologue okay so published uh, between 16 sorry 1868 and 169 uh, look at the examples um, i mean passages given here so book 5 is actually from the point of view of the murderer himself count guido franceschini he killed actually his wife and wife's uh, father and mother so this is his confession and is from his point of view why he killed his wife and her parents i killed the pompilia franceschini search okay so it goes on and on then book 6 is from the point of view of a priest giuseppo capo capon sacchi giuseppo g i u s e p p e it is pronounced giuseppo giuseppe it's simple joseph okay then capon sacchi a priest who helped uh, pompilia escape from his clutches uh, guido's clutches so the, these are his words from his point of view that she i helped 8 months since to escape her husband was retaken so after the escape guido uh, recaptured pompilia and killed her okay we at this stage we think pompilia was dead but in book 7 we come to know pompilia is able to die but mortally wounded and she is about to die but this is her confession she says to count my wounds 22 dagger wounds so it was a brutal murder a brutal assault by this guido and i am to die tonight so this is from her point of view why her husband why she escaped what really happened because she is a very young girl married to a very old man called guido okay so that is also something interesting about this work because um, we have elizabeth barrett browning barrett browning's wife she also wrote a verse novel so what is that novel it starts with aurora that's the uh, name of the first part of the novel so let me know the name of the novel by elizabeth barrett browning and these are some of the verse novels we have uh, the russian writer alexander pushkin's yuzhin wanjin and based on yuzhin wanjin we have the indian writer vikram sit vikram sat came with a beautiful verse novel the golden gate in in the golden gate he used eugen wanjin stanza eugen wanjin stanza is um uh, has 14 lines it's not a sonnet but it has 14 lines eugen wanjin stanza so that is the stanza employed by vikram sat for his novel the golden gate then we have derek walcott and his famous work omarus kind of an epic poem omarus named after homer right homer omarus so um, it's not a parody of uh, iliad and odyssey but based on iliad and odyssey it's all about saint lucia an island and it's all about fishermen and their lives so we have uh, fishermen and fisher women who are actually um, achilles and helen of troy okay then here is an interesting verse novel by the australian poet le murray le murray's famous work the boys who stole the funeral we have uh, two boys who stole a dead body from the funeral so that's a novel about next work we go for anti novel what do you mean by anti novel a novel that goes against the established conventions when we say novel we have set of set of conventions okay and those conventions or traditions are challenged so collectively called anti novel under which so here is an experimental novel by the french novelist raymond federman name of the novel double or nothing experimental the sense he that is a story yes but it is written in such a way we have to move around the page our eyes more around the page in the corner in the margin and look at the typography everything is di different about this novel 
published in uh, 1971. So I'm just giving you a sample here. Look at the lines on the screen. A view on the street. Then we have some space, white space. Then huge white hole and you fall in, down, that's better. See, our eyes have to move on and on. See, look at that, a view on the street. So there is a huge hole on the street and that is actually captured visually here. Look at that, after the street words, there is a huge space, I mean, space. And the space is actually the huge white hole. And look at the word, how the words are arranged uh, for the word down. D is there, then the next O comes at the end of the next line, then W comes at the end of the next line, very, uh, then N. So we also move down as if we are, you know, coming down the ladder or coming down the stairs. So this is how they experiment with words, typography and all the other things. And this is one experimental novel. There are a lot of other novels. We have, these novels are also called counter novel because they go against the established traditions. Example, James Joyce, Ulysses. Why Ulysses and why Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway? Because they went against the established realist novels. In realist novels, like uh, Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist, they talk about exterior reality. But there is a change, shift, in the way of, uh, in the way stories are told in the modern age, especially in 1922, the publication of Ulysses by James Joyce. Here, they are more concerned about the inner reality of characters, how people perceive world, because each and every perspective differs, right, from person to person. So that is captured by James Joyce and Virginia Woolf. Uh, through that stream of consciousness technique. Now that's the name we assign to that technique. So check out Ulysses, which is set on a single day. So tell me the day, June finished off, date and year, Ulysses. So we have uh, famous characters, uh, Stephen Dettelus again coming from a portrait of the artist as a young man. He uh, comes again in this work. Then Blooms, the Blooms family, okay? Then Virginia Woolf's uh, Mrs. Dalloway, it's all about uh, Clarissa Dalloway who throws a party in the evening. It's all about that party. And we also have another character, Septimus Warren Smith, uh, a self-shocked soldier, you know, mentally disturbed. It's about these two characters on a single day. Then we have magic realism, magic realist novel by this Colombian writer, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, 100 Years of Solitude, which is considered a classic uh, magic, uh, comes under magic realism. Similar way, we have another classic text under magic realism by Mexican novelist, Laura Esquivel, like Waterfall Chocolate, which is very interesting uh, in the sense, we have a character named Tita, who can't get married unless, uh, you know, until her mother uh, dies, because that's a tradition. The lost daughter, youngest daughter should not get married until the death of the mother. So that's kind of a curse for her. And she has to live through her life. But what happens whenever she cooks, uh, Tita cooks, her emotions, you know, get mixed in what she cooks. And if whoever eats that food, food cooked by Tita, they also feel that emotion. If uh, Tita is sad, and they also become sad. So that kind of a novel, check it out. And here is an another, uh, another experiment novel by B.S. Johnson. Name of the novel, The Unfortunates. Unfortunates is a novel in a box because it comes in the form of, uh, what do you say, box. You, what do you see on the screen? You have a box in which you have stapled chapters, you know, bound. Each and every chapter is a separate one. It's like a, a deck of cards. It's like a chapter is like a card, right? You can shuffle the order or you can shuffle the chapters in any order. So very interesting, I'm yet to read this novel. In, uh, see, when you do research on novels like this, our focus should more on the storytelling. So instead of get carried away, 
you know sometimes i have seen um, scholars working on this novel but they got carried away by the out, outward appearance so they write more about the, the you know the way it is arranged say here is a stapled chapter another chapter so they talk about the exterior one but we should be more concerned about just imagine you shuffle the first chapter and the second chapter and it goes on and on you can read the chapters in any order so whenever you read in any order definitely story that should be a lot of stories a lot of versions or the events are arranged in such a way you will come up with a lot of plot lines your focus should be more on the plot lines it's a very interesting novel check it out next futuristic novel a novel set in the future it's all, all about science a kind of a science fiction okay but these novels futuristic novels are more about uh, or dito- no, dystopian novels about a bleak society in the future okay where there is no hope there is an authoritarian or kind of it, the society is an authoritarian society or a chauvinistic male chauvinistic society famous example now we have the canadian writer margaret atwood's the handmaid's tale it is set in a in a future um, where there is a place called the republic of gilead g i l e a d why it is strange because it's ruled by men and the role of women is reduced to being only child bearers they are there only to bear children for the authorities and this novel is about a handmaid called offred o f f r e d and it's also about and lydia there is a sequel to this novel which won the booker prize recently so let me know the sequel to handmaid's tale and this is said by okay let's read some of the lines from this uh, novel published in 1985 where or sorry where the edges are we are not sure they vary according to the attacks and counter attacks but this is the center where nothing moves the republic of gilead set on lydia knows no bounds gilead is within you so how you can't come out of this clutches clutches of this authoritarian society and this character on lydia also comes in the sequel so let me know the name of the sequel to the handmaid's tale and some of the dystopian novels we have the russian writer zamya zamyatin b w e so that is a pioneering work published in 1924 then we have aldous huxley's brave new world the title is taken from shakespeare's play which play let me know then we have anthony burgess uh, a clockwork orange it's about a boy who is also a rogue um, uh, a boy who can commit murders and lot of uh, violence so let me know the major character of this novel a clockwork orange and when we say dystopian novel this is a classic george orwell's 1984 very bleak novel it's about um, winston smith set in a future where you you can't think against the government even the very thought is considered a crime it's called a thought crime and we have so- someone called or uh, a group called thought police if you think against the government that itself is a crime you can be punished and each and every action of yours is being watched so that's why we get this phrase from this novel big brother is watching you the novel is uh, it's like um, surveillance the, how the state or the authoritarian society watches each and every move made by you so check out this novel and because at the end of the novel of course our hero winston smith is caught by thought police and he is uh, tortured in a room and the room has a number what is that number because that is a ta- torture chamber where your innermost fear you realize because they torture you they know your fear your deep fear and with that they torture you so let me know the room number in which winston smith and others are tortured then we have this uh, meta fiction 
when it comes to post modern novels this genre is considered uh you know uh, an icon why what is meta fiction a fiction that goes beyond fiction right meta so a fiction which calls attention to itself self conscious fiction so what happens in meta fiction characters are aware that they are characters or sometimes the novel itself speaks to you the novel says hey readers how are you so that kind of a novel or writer himself or herself uh, they also and they come as characters they also talk about their techniques or how they wrote this novel or meta fiction about a character a character itself or a character himself or herself is a novelist they read the story written by the character so there are a lot of versions simply put meta fiction purpose it simply says that you are reading a novel it is a fictional construct it's not a realist in a realist novel because in realist novels we go along with the story we you know we get carried away by the characters and their actions here meta fiction says you know hey you are reading a novel it keeps reminding you that you are reading a fiction so it's like alienation effect in yesterday's class we uh, discussed epic theater by bertolt brecht bertolt brecht used alienation effect similar effect is used by novelists whom of meta fiction example we have famous example italian writer italo calvinos if on a winter's night a traveler this novel is about two readers a lot of readers they try to read a novel and what is the name of the novel italo calvinos if on a winter's night a traveler please read the opening line opening lines or opening paragraphs of this beautiful work so uh, we have a reader who bought a novel called italo calvinos if on a winter's night a traveler but our faith through the novel is not complete some other novel so the reader goes back to the uh, bookstore and he asks for another novel because this novel is different and he gets another novel but that's a different story and he also meets with uh, another reader a female reader she also faces a similar problem so it goes on and on now the reader actually it's you i mean that you are reading that novel again you want you have to do what you go to the publisher you get the manuscript you go to another you know you go to the author the author gives another manuscript you read lot of stories nothing is complete each and every story each and every chapter is a different story and there is no ending at all and this is a kind of an ending uh, it was published in 1979 so look at the ending so this is a female uh, reader ludmila ludmila says turn off your light too are into tired of reading and who is the hero which is actually you the reader because this novel is different because this novel is written in the second person narrative which is very rare generally a novel is written from the first person perspective someone says i i was born so that kind of a narrative or third person narrative there is a narrator who addresses as he or she characters as he or she but this novel is very different because it is a second person narrative you and you and you say just a moment i have almost finished if on a winter's night a traveler by italo calvino so that is the end and which is practically i mean literally the end because we also finish reading this novel so this is called self reflexive fiction a fiction which reflects its fictionality to the readers okay and some of the famous works we have john fowles the french lieutenant's women then kurt vonnegut's slaughterhouse five thomas pynchon's mason and dickson and we have midnight's children by salman rushdie and these novels are actually historiographic meta fiction a sub genre within meta fiction what is historiographic meta fiction uh, a meta fiction which rewrites history because we have characters who rewrites uh, uh, who rewrite uh, established history in their work so we have salman rushdi uh, midnight children where we have this uh, hero salim sinai so salim sinai writes about his family's uh, family story as well as the history of uh, indian independence and 
its growth. So a family's history and a nation's history go together. Okay. So this is a historiographic metafiction. The term was coined by Linda Hudson. Okay. So with this, let's go to graphic novel. In its latest, I mean, when it comes to the evolution of novel, so this is its latest version, graphic novel, a novel in the form of comics, in the form of um, images, as well as words. So let me give an example. We have Aurijit Sen, Indian writer, The River of Stories, which is considered the first graphic novel in India. Okay, Published in 1994. Uh, I have given um, something here. So look, so look at the images here and also the words. It looks like comics. So it's all about um, Adivasis. Beautiful, I mean, beautiful looks my world but what shall be the creatures to inhabit it? So it's written the form of uh, storytelling. Adivasis are a kind of oral, oral storytelling. So we have an Adivasi uh, here who talks about how the, his world, his world is created by goddesses called Kunjim Chantu. So he says, she took some clay and started shaping, shaped some lizards, made some tigers and bats, made snakes and birds. So kind of origin story. And this is also politically uh, kind of a challenge when the novel was written, the river of stories. So it was against a dam built again, uh, built in the Narmada river. So because of the dam, there are a lot of problems, environmental and also, uh, it also threatened the lives of Adivasis. So read this novel, which is also a classic and also a novel of protest. And other novels under um, graphic novel, we have pioneers like Will Eisner's A Contract with God. Then Alan Moore, V for Vendetta. That's also a movie called V for Vendetta. Then modern classic, a kind of an autobiography, we have Marjain Satrapi's Persepolis. Persepolis came in two parts, part one in 2000 and also part two later year. Then we have Joe Sacco's Palestine. But of all these novels, we have this famous work, Art Spiegelman's, S-P-I-E-G-E-L-M-A-N, Mouse. This novel revolutionized this genre called graphic novel. Uh, it came in two parts. Part one, My Father Bleeds History, a survivor's tale. So this novel is about the Holocaust, where, but this is a different take. Of course, graphic novel. Here, the Jews are portrayed as mouse and Nazis, Hitler's army, is portrayed as cats. It's a kind of a cat and mouse game, survival story. Okay. So with this, uh, let's end today's class and also the 10-day revision classes. Also listen to other uh, revision classes on poetry, drama, literary theory, literary criticism, and MLA handbook, ninth edition in two parts, then uh, cultural studies. So listen to all these lectures and crack net with confidence. And please subscribe to Professor Academy's new channel, Professor Academy English. Professor Academy English is a channel exclusively meant for the students of English literature. And the contents in this channel will be in English and about language, linguistics, and literature. And Professor Academy Chennai offers courses for UGC net and set. In Tamil Nadu, we offer courses for UGTRB, PGTRB, Polting TRB, and TED. Thank you so much.